when I wrote my second book, Win-Win Corporations, I never imagined that these would become buzzwords uh, in the next couple of years and corporations and individuals would be talking about win-win in every aspect of life, whether personal, professional or corporate. So let me start with a small anecdote and build on that as my theme for today's keynote. What is that one system that science and technology hasn't been able to replicate in totality? Uh, in my understanding, it is the human body. The human body is something which I consider as the greatest miracle of the divine because it has things which we take for granted but has powers which we, don't, which we cannot even imagine. For example, the human eye, just an inch and a half, but can perceive one crawled color combination. This two and a half inch long tongue, which can do a lot of damage, but houses 10,000 taste buds. The small heart, which we see pumping, or rather which we don't see, but live because of pumping every single day, beats almost 250 crore times in a lifetime, and pumps 200 crores of blood. And our arteries are silently rushing through the blood across our body almost 12,000 miles every single day. So that's the kind of miracle that the human body is. We don't even imagine because we think that we have this and hence it's ours and what's the big deal. But what is important is to look inside and see what is it that we can learn from this human body. And let me share a story to uh, elaborate on what I want to say, to elucidate on that. For example, we want to consume a fruit. You see a fruit on the tree. Your mind says that you want to consume it. The tongue kind of generates those uh, fluids. The enzymes are trying to give you that message from the stomach. Your legs move in that direction. You bend down, pick up a stone, throw it at the, in the direction of the fruit. The fruit falls down, you pick it up, hopefully wash it bite into it, chew it, it goes into the stomach, it gets digested and the essence of the fruit is passed on to all parts of the body. Which particular limb of the body or which particular aspect of the body was responsible for facilitating this entire process? You cannot name a single part of the body which was responsible. Each part of the human body works together in order to generate this win-win outcome so that each aspect of our existence enjoys the fruit in its, in its essence and the body receives the nutrition which the fruit has to offer. I think the greatest lessons for humanity lie in the way the human body functions and that's why I call that a win-win. There has been a lot of discourse in the last half a decade about the role of businesses and capitalism being a bane or a boon. In my interactions with nearly 250 industry captains over the last decade, both in India and overseas, subject experts in Europe and US, where I had an opportunity of being at Harvard, Copenhagen and elsewhere, convinced me of this particular outlook that capitalism is one of the greatest systems of economics that has been created by humanity over the last 300 years, where no single individual can achieve what all of us can achieve together. And in today's global world, with global supply chains, the production services that each one of us consume, it is even more true that capitalism plays that role. But what is important to note is what is the end objective of corporations and the capitalist system? Is it making profits? Uh, to say that the objective of a business is to make profit is to say that the objective of the human body is to make red blood cells. Right? We do not live in order to make red blood cells. Red blood cells are the means which enable us to live. Similarly, the breathing that goes on now, the oxygen helps us to exist. But do we live to breathe? Similarly, profits are meant to help organizations achieve a much larger objective. What is that objective is the question which each one of us as individuals, entrepreneurs, leaders, managers and corporations need to ask. 
Let me go back to the 18th century. The Scottish moral philosopher Adam Smith, the father of economics as he's called, his famous work, The Wealth of Nations, has formed the basis of the economic theory that all of us study today and all the nations of the world follow. Uh, but very few people know that a decade before he wrote The Wealth of Nations, he wrote what was his book, The Theory of Moral Sentiment. And his basic premise was that morality or ethics should form the basis of economics. A millennium before that, Aristotle in Greece gave the same message that social and economic interests should coexist for society and its citizens to benefit from a good life. A millennium before that, Chanakya gave the same message in this part of the world. So we have the same message coming in millennium after millennium in different continents, in different time periods, telling us win-win is the way forward. But again, we are usually lost in the what, which, when, where and how of businesses. We forget one more word which is very critical, the why of businesses. Why do businesses exist? Why do businesses do what they do and how can that help a much larger objective rather than simply making money? This would lead to more integrated solutions for all of us. What can I do for my stakeholders? What can I do for the society? And what can I do for humanity through my corporate organization? Very often, we presume that personal value systems do not have to resonate with corporate value systems. This is for me, but corporations may be any telega. This is not something that would work in businesses. We forget that human beings are at the core of the corporation. There is nobody who is running the organization but human beings. It's the alignment of these values which will lead to the true outcomes that we are looking for. It's often said that of the six M's of business, money, machine, minute, method, material, men or human beings are the most important because they give value to the other five M's. But for them, all the other five have no existence or relevance. Why am I talking about corporations? We are all so obsessed with what happens in the business world. Economic Times, Financial Express, Mini. There are half a dozen newspapers competing with each other to give the most attractive headlines in the corporate world. And I think for a long time, corporates and politics are the two kinds of news which attract attention in maximum. One fact file will answer that question. Of the 100 largest economies in the world, 51 are corporations and 49 are countries. I repeat, of the 100 large economies in the world, 51 are corporations and 49 are countries. So that's the kind of power, financial power, human power, infrastructure power that corporations possess. But there is another problem which is an outcome of that. In America alone, the top 1% of corporate leaders have more access to wealth than the 99% of the population. In India, it's a little better. The top 10% of the corporate leaders have better access to wealth than the remaining 80% of the population. So if we want to make a difference, this is the kind of target audience we need to be focusing on.